picky eating. So children usually are called picky eaters or sometimes they are called fuzzy eating, fuzzy eaters. There are different names to it. So those who demonstrate food avoidance or, or usually eat a very limited amount of food or number of food, variety of food, limited variety of food, okay, they are called as picky eaters. And usually they always eat something that is different from the meal for, of what their parents are having or other family members are having. And they usually refuse to eat the right food and they often uh, they will refuse to try new food. These are picky eaters. Okay. They will eat only very small meals. They will take a lot of time to eat. Okay. Eat very slowly. And they will eat only a very limited variety of meals. What they feel comfortable to and comfortable in. And they are not uh, quite enthusiastic about trying new kind of food. New texture. New taste. New types of food. They are not. They, they are not encouraged to eat something new okay so they eat more slowly than other kids and they eat a very limited amount of food regularly they keep on refusing new kind of food and always they will ask for the same meal again and again whatever they're comfortable with if it is biscuit or a fruit a vegetable a cereal whatever that's the same thing they want on a daily basis and they are highly reluctant to try new food prefer only drinks over food they like like to have something to drink like smoothies juices milk over food and they have a very strong food preferences uh, if the, they they are given what they like they will complete it they will eat it but if it is something new they will not at all try it so these are the behavioral patterns you see in a picky eater what is food neophobia? Both are food neophobia and picky eating are closely related. But in food neophobia, there is a fear of unfamiliar food. Okay. Uh, and it can start at any time from the age of one year, one and a half year to preschool age. Anytime it can start. Usually in majority of the cases, they are scared of new fruits and vegetables. And uh, you have to keep uh, if you want want your child to overcome the food neophobia, you have to keep offering them uh, that this new food at least ten to fifteen times or more than that exposure should be given of the same food. So at least they know that they come to know that this is a food. They do not have to be worried about it or scared of it. Okay, it's just a food. So once they identify it, slowly they will start the acceptance. You have to show them that this is safe to eat. Sometimes you may have to try the same food in front of them. If it is a new fruit or a vegetable, the parents may have to try it in front of them to see the, to show them that this is, this is safe. This will not cause any harm. You can eat it and then the child will follow. And do not try to bribe the child with rewards. If you eat it, you will get chocolate or you will be taken to a park or something. Don't bribe them. They have to understand. They should have uh, identify uh, the food as something safe and they have to build a positive relationship with the food that is important okay so that is food neophobia so it is seen to be peer the peak cases of food neophobia is seen between the ages of two and six years of life that is a toddler to preschool age and slowly it subsides when the child grows up and there are high chances that the children who suffer from food neophobia may also suffer from a lot of nutritional deficiencies. Hard vegetables, meat and certain fruits. Okay, These are the most common food items they refuse to try. Okay, And it delays the oral motor development as well. What are the causes of food neophobia or picky eating? The factors. First, we will see the environmental factors. Okay, at home, what is happening? Frequently, the child is given the same food on a daily basis. Okay, even when the child was developing, the child was just having starting to have the memory of food from the weaning diet itself. 
same kind of food was given to the child on a regular basis, on a daily basis. The parents failed to provide variety for the child. That could be one of the reasons why the child became a picky eater. Okay, they are over familiarized with, with the same kind of food. Second is the mealtime environment. Okay, the dining setup. Do, does the child have its own chair, like the high chair? Okay, and how is the meal time? Okay, is it too distracting? Are the parents fighting? Too many family members. The child is not getting uh, enough attention from the family members. Okay, a uh, lot of smartphones on the table, a lot of TV, radio, distraction, sound, music playing. Okay, the child is not able to focus on the food. Okay, this kind of environment can also lead to a picky eating. And then fast and processed food are over served okay cravings for salt sugar and fat may be there and too much of fast food and processed food given to the children at meal time is also cause of picking eating then they will only focus on the same junk food they want the same processed food on a daily basis then media exposure exposure to food in the media encourages the child to have unhealthy options rather than healthy options okay this comes through if you are uh, using a lot of uh, media while eat feeding the child okay the child may say i don't want this i want what they are showing in the tv i want that okay the child may fuss over it okay so these are the environmental factors that could lead to picky eating what are the other reasons sensory processing the child may find it difficult with specific flavors or textures of food if the food is slightly salty or if the food is slightly sugary, okay, the child will, uh, th that, that overwhelms the child because the children usually have higher amount of taste buds as compared to adults. So, a little bit of salt forward or sugar forward food can be overwhelming for the child, okay. So, they will find it difficult to handle such flavors, such as strong pungent or strong uh, flavor profiles will be difficult to handle. Then oral motor, motor skills, the ability to chew and swallow, okay, if that is delayed in the child, the chewing ability and the swallowing ability is delayed in the child, that could also lead to picky eating. So they find it easier to have drinks or to have smoothies, to have semi-solid, semi-liquid diet, okay, they rather have a hard or a hard food, like hard vegetables, boiled vegetables, meat, okay, they will find it difficult to have such food. Then certain medical causes like food allergies, acid uh, refluxes, regurgitation issues, okay, that could also be a medical cause that lead to picky eating. Snowball effect, when the phase of uh, picky eating uh, snowballs, which means today the child is only uh, having issues with a type of rice tomorrow the child will have issue with rice uh, wheat ragi okay the fourth day the child will have issues with rice wheat ragi and vegetables okay so day by day the variety of food that the child ha has problems with increases so that is the snowball effect okay it starts with one or two items that the child does not like by the end of the month or by the end of the year, the child is not liking 1,000 items. Okay, that is the snowball effect. So, these are the different causes that leads to picky eating. So, these red flags you can look after if you if you want to diagnose a picky eat, eating child. So, organic red flags, aspiration, okay, when the child is swallowing, it goes into the uh, windpipe rather than the food pipe and it leads to coughing gagging pneumonia in severe cases it may lead to pneumonia dysphagia swallowing difficulty the child has difficulty and pain in swallowing when the child swallows something it's painful and it's difficult for the child to swallow okay vomiting and diarrhea digestive issues failure to thrive or failure to grow or keep up with the peers okay Usually children born with certain uh, congenital malformations, okay, they may have this failure to thrive. Pain with feeding, okay, it, it is very painful to swallow or to eat or the stomach is upset and uh, the stomach causes grumbling pain while the child is being fed. Inability to advance textures, which is which means to, to try new textures. 
Developmental delay is also seen in terms of height and weight. Presence of other medical conditions like any intolerances, food intolerances, allergies, or any uh, surgical situation or any anatomical uh, affirmities present in the children. Then environmental red flags, force feeding the child, that is a parental red flag. Uh, re a report of presence of distraction at meal times like books, toys, television, smartphones. Okay. Um, it is seen that the increased st stress levels are seen in meal times when the family gets together. People fight with each other. Parents are fighting. Family members are fighting, scolding, raising the voice. The child gets scared, distracted. Okay, that is an environmental factor. Then prolonged meal times, taking more than half an hour to complete a meal. Okay, inability to advance textures again. Uh, not able to try new textures. Absence of independent feeding. The child is not given the autonomy to hold spoon and feed itself. Somebody has to run behind the child. So the portion control is in the, them in their hand. It is not in the children's autonomy. Then some behavioral red flags. Anticipatory gagging. You can see the as soon as you try to feed the child something new, the child will gag and try to pull it out of the mouth. Okay. And spit it out of the mouth. Okay. And food selectiveness, only selective variety they will eat, others they will reject. Cessation of oral intake out after a traumatic incident, as I mentioned. Usually it happens with choking hazards. Kids who undergo choking hazard, they get so scared of the solid food that they will completely stop having solid food. They will depend on liquid food. Extended periods of food refusals for more than one to two weeks, they will not try anything new. And inability to advance textures or transition to cup feeding. From bottle feeding, they have to transition to cup feeding. That transition is not happening. They want bottle feeding. Poor sleep pattern, not sleeping properly. Not eating or drinking uh, over uh, at night. Not having the autonomy of feeding themselves, like using their own mug, plate, spoon and feeding themselves. Tantrums at meal times, extended meal times. Okay, these all are the red flags which you should look. If the child is showing at least majority of these red flags, it means the child is a picky eater. Some associated conditions with picky eating: one is low birth weight or BMI, low BMI for the child. So, if the child was a low birth weight baby or an underweight baby, usually they tend to be picky eaters as well. And once once they become a picky eater, they be, they have a low body mass index as compared to their fellow uh, fellow mates or playmates. And being a, uh, a low birth weight baby or being a or staying a low body mass index baby that could lead to developmental delay as well. Then future eating disorders, picky eaters. Or are, are the precursor warning it that it could lead to some development of a eating disorder later in life, for example, anorexia, bulimia. Okay. So it is seen that children who were picky eaters during their toddler age or preschool age, they tend to become an adult adolescence or teenage or an adult who who suffers from anorexia or any other eating disorders. Other associations are if it if it does not if the child does not have any eating disorder in the adult in their adult time or teenage time they be, kind of become obsessive compulsive uh, disorder person or autistic they are on the autistic spectrum okay so these are the negative effects of having picky eating behaviors some complications and consequences may lead to the growth retardation. Uh, poor feeding behavior uh, and long term long term effect of delayed growth and development cognitive development is delayed nutritional deficiencies common deficiencies will be zinc vitamin b1 deficiencies vitamin c deficiency calcium deficiency all the b complex deficiencies iron deficiency okay these are the most common deficiencies seen among picky eaters Differential di diagnosis, there are certain disease conditions that are associated with picky eating. Okay, uh, Earlier, you may just notice picky eating, but when you consult a doctor, when they do the test, they may identify some disease conditions or food allergies later. 
okay so this usually picky eating is associated with food allergies food intolerances lactose intolerance celiac sprue gerd that is gastroesophageal reflux syndrome as i mentioned rumination the children who suffer from rumination high chances are there that they are suffering from gerd oral hypersensitivity and post traumatic feeding disorder so these are some of the disease conditions associated with picky eating the child will show all the behavior of a picky eater but when you diagnose this, diagnose that further when you look into it you may find some differential diagnosis from that as well so management of picky eater as we have discussed in the previous slide all those management aspects will come okay uh, repeating it the same again let them let the child touch smell and taste the new food without forcing them don't force feed them okay expose uh, lead uh, like expose the same food again and again at least 15 to 20 times at least once they will at least touch smell and taste the food by themselves encourage that don't force feed them offer new food only one at a time okay don't overwhelm them with so too many new options only introduce one new food at a time and expose this new food if the child refuses it expose this new food for at least 15 to 20 times and then give up May, make food simple plain and recognizable don't over uh, spice it up don't make it too salty sweet okay don't over season it or over temper uh, tamper it then offer small uh, amounts of food new food with familiar food uh, whatever new food you want to introduce a majority of the plate should be of familiar food what the child likes only small portions of new food has to be added offer new foods when your toddler is most hungry so you can capitalize on that appetite okay when the child is actually hungry you have not given the child any snacks or beverages in between the child is really hungry that is the right time to introduce something new Then we have the NEAT program. NEAT stands for Nutritional Education Aimed at Toddlers program. Nutritional Education Aimed at Toddlers program. So this program project was aimed at promoting toddler development and self-regulation by improving the, improving the feeding practices for toddlers. Specifically, this project was designed to explore whether completing a feeding and nutritional education program, how it affects, okay, what were the outcomes of this uh, these feeding practices so first it improves the parents feeding attitude knowledge confidence and behavior the parents will know how to feed the child in the correct way they will have the knowledge at what what is the right time to feed the right item okay or introduce the right, right food item they will be confident if the child is showing rejection if the child is showing tantrum it will not stress the patient so sorry it will not stress the parent they will be they will know they will be uh, prepared to accept this kind of tantrums and they will be more confident in their approach okay the second outcome is that it positively influences toddlers food consumption when you apply neat program on the toddler slowly the child will start to accept more varieties of food the food consumption and the nutritional deficiencies of the toddler will be corrected over a period of time then it positively influences the toddler's growth and health. When the food consumption is positive, automatically the child's growth and health will be back on track. So these are the, uh, uh, the main designs of this NEAT project. So that's all for the second presentation. If you have any queries, you can